Welcome back. In this segment, I'm going to discuss the five proofs for the existence of God. Um, we have a lot of atheism in our world today, and a lot of people are agnostic. Um, it really boils down to a binary choice. Either God is, or God isn't. In this segment, I will discuss and demonstrate from science and reason that God exists. Um, let me give you an example. Um, let's just compare these two uh, images here. Okay, um, Here is a robotic hand, which most fair-minded people would be uh, we would say that it's intelligently designed. Like, look at this robotic hand, how complex it is. But when we compare a human hand to a robotic hand, some uh, opponents of uh, the existence of God would say that a human hand is just purely coincidence. But when you compare a human hand to a robotic hand, we can see that a human hand is even much more complex than a robotic hand. A human hand can feel, it has uh, nerves, um, it even has uh, fingerprints, um, and many components, uh, tendons, bones, um, ligaments, uh, when you compare a human hand to a robotic hand. So how could somebody being fair-minded say that a human hand is just pure coincidence, but a robotic hand is intelligently designed? Reason can tell us that God exists and can reveal truths about God's existence. Reason can show us that God is one, spiritual, eternal, and uncreated. Some truths about God cannot be known by reason alone, such as the Trinity or the Incarnation. Um, these truths can be only known by public divine revelation and not by reason alone. In this segment, I will stick to science and reason alone to give us the five proofs for the existence of God. Um, St. Thomas Aquinas, here's an artist, a picture of St. Thomas Aquinas, gave us the five proofs of God, God's existence. The first proof, and I have it on the board here, is the first proof is the proof from motion, the first cause, the need for a prime mover. The second proof for the existence of God, which I will discuss in this segment, is the need for a first cause. A first cause is necessary because mathematically, if you have zero, if you have nothing, zero can, only zero can come from zero. Zero plus zero equals zero. Nothing exists if a first cause doesn't cause something to exist. Zero plus zero equals zero. If you notice mathematically, if you have a zero, something outside of that zero must exist to be added to the zero to equal something, one. And that zero, the, the thing that exists before the zero, is God. God is the thing that exists before a zero. God plus zero creates something, one. The third proof is the need for a necessary being, otherwise known as a contingent being. 
everything is a contingent being of the material world. For example, I would not have been born if it wasn't for my parents to procreate. I'm a contingent being. The fourth proof is the need for a supremely perfect being. This is called gradation of being. Perfection, that there must be a perfect being. Um, this is also known as the hierarchy of biological classification. That there are subordinate species and the highest degree is God. The fifth proof is the need for an intelligent designer. In this segment, I will stick to the second proof and the fifth proof to make my uh, case. Let's begin with the second proof, the first cause. Everything in the universe is explained by a previous cause. Nothing begins to exist without a prior cause, without a first cause. Nothing, zero, can cause something to exist. It's mathematically impossible. Only zero can equal zero. Zero can never pop something out of zero. Zero plus zero equals zero. Material objects are the product of a chain of events. Matter itself needs a previous cause to explain its existence. So matter itself needs a previous cause to explain its existence. Something cannot come from nothing on its own. The only answer is that something outside of the material universe created matter out of nothing. Remember the mathematical formula. Only zero can come out of zero. Zero equals zero. Zero plus zero equals zero. So there must be something outside of nothing to create something to exist. This is God. This power outside of the material universe had to create matter to begin with. This power must be spirit because it is outside of the material universe and outside of matter. This power must be infinite and uncreated to create something out of nothing. The gap between nothing and something between nothingness and something is infinite. Nothing in the universe has been observed scientifically to cause its own existence out of zero, out of nothingness. And that's what science does. Science observes. So science has never observed zero, something coming out of zero without a first cause, without a primary mover. For matter to make itself out of nothing when it did not exist before is scientifically and mathematically impossible. Nothing, zero, can pop something into existence. It's mathematically impossible without a prior cause. What about the question, did matter always exist? The answer is no. Matter needs a cause to explain its existence. Nothing, zero, can give itself existence. If matter was eternal, there would have to be a co-eternal infinite power that caused it to exist, a higher power. If nothing can make itself, you may ask, who made God? It's a good question.
The simple answer is that no one made God. God always existed. God alone is the first cause, the uncaused cause on which all other causes depend. We cannot have an infinite, infinite chain of events without a first cause, a cause without a prior cause. The cause without a prior cause we call God. We must have an independent cause on which all other things depend. Everything depends on a first cause, but the first cause does not depend on anything. The first cause simply is and always was. Recent discoveries in astro physicists, I'll show you a picture of it right there, have proven scientifically that the universe had a beginning, that the universe had a big bang. Um, this validates the first cause theory described by St. Thomas Aquinas. The question is, who set off the Big Bang? The answer is God. Many astrophysicists are answering God as well. Let's review the fifth proof of the existence of God. Intelligent design. Many astrophysicists and honest scientists observe a complicated system perfectly constructed for an obvious purpose. Common sense says that an intelligent being is responsible. If you found a perfectly running watch, here's a picture of a watch, hopefully you can see that in the screen. I have a watch right here, a perfectly running watch. Let's say you found a perfectly running watch in the forest. Would you say that the perfectly running watch just popped itself out of existence by sheer coincidence? No. Why? Because the object was designed for an obvious purpose. The watch was designed to tell time. An intelligent being had to design the watch and be responsible for the watch. The watch could not create itself. No one argues that watches came into existence by chance. Now compare the watch to a human eye. The human eye is amazingly complicated and is arranged for a purpose, to see. For an eye to develop from a few cells to a mature organ is a complex transition with numerous steps and complex elements coming together in perfect harmony. Now, Let's look at the universe. Let's look at the solar system. See how complicated the solar system is? Let's compare the solar system to a watch. See how the Earth and the planets orbit just a few degrees around the sun? See how the Earth and the planets in our solar system operate and orbit around the sun? This is complex harmony in balance. Perfect harmony, our solar system, just like a watch, in perfect harmony. If the Earth changed its orbit by just a few degrees, or the axis of the Earth changed by a few degrees, it would be catastrophic. 
The Hubble telescope has shown us that the universe is more complicated than anyone ever imagined. At the same time, the universe in our solar system is perfectly organized like a watch. Astrophysicists have shown that the Big Bang was so powerful that it baffles the imagination. The blast had to be regulated within a precise range for the universe to be formed. If the speed of the exploding elements were a fraction faster or slower, we would have chaos. Not a perfectly balanced, organized universe as we know it. What are the odds of a precise Big Bang? Given the size and complexity of the universe and our solar system, it is reasonable to believe in an intelligent designer. St. Thomas Aquinas, here's another picture of him, who lived between 1225 and 1274 AD, is considered as one of the dozen greatest philosophers of the Western world and one of the greatest theologians. St. Thomas Aquinas wrote the five ways to, produce, to prove the existence of God. The first way, the way of motion. The second way, the way of causation. The third way, the way of contingency. The fourth way, the way of goodness. The fifth way, the way of design. Let's review the five proofs. Let's go to the first proof, the proof from motion, the first mover. The world is in constant motion and in constant movement. Every motion and change in the world presupposes a prior cause, a mover that produces that movement. Let me give you an example. Here is a pen. Okay, let me put the pen on the table right here. Hopefully you can see that if you can't, but let's just put the pen there. If I leave the pen there, the pen will not move on its own. Now let's take the solar system. How does the solar system move perfectly without something to set the motion? Just like I move the pen by hitting the pen. The same point. There must be a first cause or a first mover to cause motion. This is God. The second proof, a first cause. There must be a first cause that itself is not caused for these series of events, an uncaused cause. This is God. The third proof, the proof from contingency, a necessary being. Everything in this world is contingent. Procreation, for example. How are animals born? That is, it depends on something greater than itself for its existence. The world itself is dependent on something for its, for its existence. This is God. The fourth proof, the proof from degrees of perfection, the most perfect being. Let me just show you a human anatomy. Look at how complex human anatomy is. We have the skeleton, we have the organs, we have you know, the eyes, we have a nervous system, we have blood, we have a mind with memory, we have uh, all the different ligaments, joints, all perfectly balanced and working together for a purpose. How can you say that our human bodies had no intelligent designer? Also, let's compare a robotic hand. We look at these robots that are produced and say, how intelligent! This is great! 
artificial intelligence. Well, who created the artificial intelligence? Someone had to create it. Someone had to cause it to be. Someone had to cause a robotic hand or a robot to exist. So why not use the same analogy or comparison to a human hand, to a human body? Something had to cause it to exist. Someone had to, someone or something had to cause it to be created. It's not just coincidence. Well, we have DNA. It's kind of like a uh, fingerprint on our DNA, which identifies each individual human being. Is that coincidence? I think not. Order in the world's atmosphere and solar system is like a man-made watch. The solar system, time, it's a creation. If a watch is created and we tell time by our solar system, who created the solar system? A watch cannot give itself existence. A watch cannot create itself. Behind the order of our solar system is an intelligence or designer who is responsible for it. This order is precise. Remember, if the Earth just changed its axis, axis by a fraction, we would have chaos. We would not be able to survive. If the Earth was several degrees closer to the sun, we would all burn. Okay. We would not be able to survive. Everything has to be in perfect balance for life to exist on our planet. This design is made from intelligence. This intelligence is God. Thank you.